everybody, welcome back. Hope you've had a great day so far and you're making the most of everything that's on offer through STEM learning. Uh, what we're going to focus on now is coding. And coding is a really key element of the race team. Uh, we've got lots of people on the team who are doing the job of coding and making sure that that enables the performance analysis to take place. Now then, why is coding so key and, and why should we be doing it in a STEM club? Well, A, it's a fantastic career, but B, for me, it's more about the skills that you get from coding. Now, what I love about it is that actually it fosters the confidence in children to be able to fail. And I think failure is a really key point. I don't think there's a sports team in the land that doesn't experience failure at some point. And this is a really important way to build resilience and that kind of competitive nature that top performing sports teams have. It's making sure that you learn from your failures and that your failures actually increase your performance all the time. And that's what coding does. Now, on STEM Group, we've got a fantastic game called Code for the Cup, and you'll find it under our coding efficiency resource. And I've got it here on the screen. Now, what this does is it's a really straightforward way of doing some block coding with your young people and actually showing them um, how you would code a boat over a start line. Now, obviously, in real life, the boats aren't coded through the start line, but they do make use of the data available to them to get over the start line at the right time and hopefully at the front of the fleet. Now, what this game does is it uses a simple block code coding. You've got all your options at the top there your procedures, your logic, your inputs and values, and any loops that you want to do. It's really nice because it's very much, it builds, so you're able to cater for all the abilities in your class. When you've decided what you want your yacht to do, your yacht is down here, you can then run your code. The idea is that you get your boat through the start line up here, okay? Now obviously I've coded it as such that it's not going to go through the start line. But you can see how you do the simple coding on the side and then you get some um, feedback at the end. What's great about it, coming back to that failure side of things, you simply play again, refine your code and have another go and see how you get on. So it's a really nice game, really great to use. Um, I mean, it's actually ICT core curriculum, but also it's a really nice game to play within your STEM club to bring that sort of core technology side of things into your club and really showcase the types of things that, or the types of places that coding can take you. And I think it really opens young people's eyes to actually coding can be used in all manner of different situations. It's not just somebody sat behind a desk, you know, coding for the, you know, something that is invisible. This is really tangible and very, very real life and very easy to make those links for your young people. Have a go, we hope you like it. Hi, I'm Will Bakewell, and I'm Control Systems Engineer at INEOS Team UK. I joined about 18 months before AC35. I wanted to move out to the automotive world, and I wanted to move into a sporting context. The America's Cup seemed like, from an engineering point of view, and a sort of sporting engineering point of view, it represented something where I could have an impact on a, a sort of personal level. I'm responsible for the control strategies that are used to fly the boat. You have to treat it as a cohesive whole when you're looking at the control. So it's really the control strategies that combine all the different aspects of all the different control surfaces to give the best possible flight. We need to consider how we distribute computing resource and that sort of thing around the boat and how that interplays with our control strategies. Coming on. Nice work, mate. From the, the sails, 
which obviously produce forces that are integral to the flight control. Like we have to take account of them. But sort of below the water, what actually lifts the boat up are the wings that are on the end of the end of the foil arms, and they have two independent flaps on the sort of symmetrically on the on the inner and outer bits of those of those foil wings. Uh, that we can use to adjust the lift and then we can actually adjust the rudder as a whole backwards and forwards to, to try and change the pitching forces on the boat. Whenever we go sailing I'll be on I'll be on chase four. I sit at the sit at the back of back of chase four with my laptop with a direct stream of data from the boat um, which enables me to monitor monitor everything. I think winning the cup would just be this culmination of, of so many people's hard work, different specialities coming together as one team to be able to do something, to create this really cool, very fast boat that hopefully beats everyone else would be absolutely amazing. So winning it would just be the ultimate. That concludes our part of, STEM, of our STEM learning day. We hope you've enjoyed it and learned something through our videos and our, our brief introductions. Obviously, to find out more, visit STEM Crew. There's a whole host of information on there for you. And as I said earlier, it is all completely free to use. There's no hidden costs, um, which, of course, is very, very useful in the current climate. Hope you enjoy it. and um, Thank you for tuning in.